and all the way down connected to my bladder. So even if I need to go for a week, I can't hold it in, so I have to just go. Um, but the thing is, what the hospitals can do nowadays and what the doctors can do, it's so important to realise that and support them, which is why I'm raising the money, um, so that they can do things like that and help people do what they can. What happened to me, um, just statistically, I get that out, um, 70% death rate, so it's huge. And out of that 30% don't even make it to the hospital. And also the 30% that do survive usually have speech problems, memory loss, disabilities, loss of vision. So when I came out of hospital, um, the first thing that I remember was I came home and walked in the house and I was really, really, really happy. I used to walk very, very, very slowly because I had no energy. I'd lost like something like two stone of weight. And I wanted to just go in my own bedroom I just wanted to lie down I just wanted to be there. So I missed it so much. And when I got to the bottom of the stairs, I had forgotten how to climb the stairs. So I walked there and I just looked at the stairs and, and I, my coordination from my brain like it wasn't really working, so I'd actually totally forgotten how to climb up stairs. And for the next few weeks, all I did was walk up and walk down with help. So it was either with my husband or with the kids, and I'd do that every single day, so I got better and better and better. And that training that I did really, and the willpower as well, really helped me, you know, get my strength back and to do that. I also couldn't watch any TV or couldn't be on a phone for more than um, a few minutes. So what I did was I targeted myself every day that I'm going to do another five minutes on the TV, see how it goes. And I started to get headaches, but every day I would then give it another five minutes and slowly, slowly I could watch half an hour and then 45 minutes. I also suffered um, some loss of hearing. And basically, it wasn't so much the loss of hearing. So if I could hear something, like very slight, it was amplified. So if you imagine, you know, like Spider-Man, everything I could hear was like so loud. And so I used to walk around, and I used to have like tissue in my ears and cotton wool because I didn't like the sound of anything. But what I realized was that I had to just get used to it. So I had to train myself again to get used to the sound. Sometimes I still, if I watch something read really, really loud, I don't, I don't like it, I'll remove myself from uh, where I am. But the sound again, I have to train myself. So all these things, it took a lot of determination. Um, you know, I lo lost my confidence. So and it wasn't just because of the way I looked, because I lost so much weight. I also um, suffered from hair loss. So I used to wake up in the morning and I used to just find clumps of hair on my pillow. And then I always used to have very, very, very long hair. So it's that identity, I completely lost it. And my confidence just went and I used to go shopping. Like later on, my husband, and I just used to stop crying you know, in the middle of nowhere. And what I realized was, right, I need to put everything right. So I contacted someone to get some I don't know if anyone gets extensions, but they know braids, whatever, and clippings. So I contacted someone and they actually made me these extensions. I put them in my hair when I used to go out and things like that. I then decided to go to my doctor and explain that I've lost my confidence. And to realise that itself is really, really important because sometimes it's very hard to admit that I've lost my confidence and I actually don't know what to do. I went to the doctor, I told him that I'd lost it, and he then referred me to the priory. So I actually went and I had um, therapy sessions at the priory. I did about six of them, but you know after the third one, I totally saw the difference of how I was. And you know, the crying stopped, the thinking about why did it happen to me stopped, and then I thought about 
actually, it did happen to me, and I survived, and I'm actually okay. So that was what the change that therapy did. So don't always be scared to admit that there's something wrong and I need some help. And you know, it's really, really important to talk and tell people. And um, the other thing that really, really helped me was doing video blogs. So I've actually done three video blogs. And I only did them, I think, five months after I had come out of hospital. And I released them. And these video blogs have um, gone on to websites like the Brain Span Foundation. They have posted it on the website. And a lot of people have contacted me because after watching them, they've actually said, you know, that's been really helpful. I didn't know about this. And thank you for sharing it. And also, it's not just about you might not know someone who's been through what I've been through. It could just be someone who's been ill or someone who needs a bit of help. Those video blogs are able to do that, are able to help. So I hope you can watch them and then you can share it as well. So don't just watch it for yourself, share it with other people and you know whether you share it on your social media, on your Twitter or on Facebook or on Instagram, please do that because um, it does help other people. I've um, since then just done a couple of talks. I've done one at the Royal College of Surgeons and it was really, really good to be able to share my experiences with um, those people because they had obviously known people who had been through something similar. And I think as well it gives others confidence that Okay, yeah, that happened to me. And okay, so I'm not the only one who's been through that. I also then did a couple of talks on some radio shows. So I did Unity Radio, which is a, a North Manchester radio station. Um, so you're probably not aware of it. But the other one which you may be aware of is I was on BBC Asia Network, and that um, was really, really good as well. And every time I've done something, I've had so much um, response back which shows then whatever I'm saying or whatever I'm showing through my, through my blogs is helping other people. Um, I've just got a few quotes which I just want to mention to finish off. Is, um, and I say these to my kids all the time and they like stick of me and now they actually repeat them back to me. So if I do anything or say anything, they'll be like, mm. um, So I just want to say be bold, be strong, be confident, have a goal, have a purpose, um, and, and have your mindset to be able to achieve what you want to. And most importantly, look after yourself. Like I've changed the way I eat, I changed the way I do things, I'm very much into health and fitness. So it's very important to look after yourself because, again, I think one of the other reasons I have survived and and being able to do what I can do is because I did lead a healthy lifestyle. I did look at what I ate and what I drank and what I did and what exercises I did. Um, never let others determine what you want to do. This is your life and it's your mind. And I feel that I'm stronger than ever before. I, I, I feel my willpower has really led me through this and I feel even stronger than I was before I was ill. You know, I'm writing a book at the moment as well, and, um, which is going to be released later on this year, which is going to be called Room 23, obviously the hospital room that I was in. Um, but also, um, I want to finish by saying everyone's been talking about Muhammad Ali this week, um, and fortunate to lose someone so inspirational. But he, one of the quotes that he said is, he who is not courageous enough to take risks will accomplish nothing in life. Thank you for listening.